Let's see here. So y'all know the drill. We got to check the tubes first to make sure that I can hear myself. Because if I can't hear myself, then damn way you going to hear me. That's for sure. Shout out to who uh, requested this video. It's a pretty good idea for this video. I thought about a lot of ideas over the, over the year I've been doing this. And I never actually thought about doing this kind of video. Not for this system, at least. I did it in Aerofly a few times, but... Turn this on. Make sure I can hear me. Oh yeah. All right. So we gotta adjust a few things in Microsoft Simulator first before we actually get live doing this because the uh, this Garmin system is in three of the planes uh, that I know about at least. Uh, however. The plane that I'm going to use tonight is the most advanced of the three, which is the Cirrus Vision Jet SF G250, whatever, whatever it's called. It, but it, you know which one I'm talking about, the, the Vision Jet. I know, like in uh, X Plane, it's called. I know they have an SF50 model. I think this one's the G2. But uh, I do need to turn off a few things to make this work possibly, because. Uh, this plane is not very friendly to heavy uses of data, so we got to turn off all the traffic. Got to turn off live weather. And we have to put this vehicle in a place where there's not a lot of people, so we're going to be taking off pretty much from the Cook Islands uh, and then maybe flying, maybe flying tonight. If we do fly, we're going to fly to Tahiti. That's like the closest, uh, one of the closest islands. All right, let's go to data. Let's turn off photogrammetry and live weather. All, right, all that is good. And let's go in and turn the ATC off as well. This is just to make sure the screens stay on. <laughs> like this plane, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if you've heard me talk about this plane or not in the past when I done videos with this plane but they kind of falsely advertised this plane the uh the guys at flight effects because they did not say anything about problems with this plane when you go to buy it you don't learn about the issues of this plane until after you buy it and you get access to their website all right so and there's like the first document you can download says fix your black screens on xbox that's the first document not how to fly the plane, not how to <laughs> operate the equipment. The first, the first document you can download is how to fix up, you know, their fucked up program. So, all right, let's go to the hangar. Oh, I'm already in the G2. All right, so this is the jet right here, this G2 Vision Jet. This Garmin system is this one here with the, where it's all touchscreen. So like I said, the TBM 930 has it, and so does the Cessna Longitude. Uh, but it's not as advanced as this one. This one here, we can actually bring up all the charts. We can sync it with SimLink from Navigraph, which I'm going to show you as well, which is the only plane that does it in Microsoft. Uh, and you can also bring in your flight plan as well. So, all right. And uh, when I, after this video is done tonight and I put it on the um, playlist for Microsoft, I'm going to put a link for the Garmin cockpit reference guide that uh, you know I used when I was learning it. It's like, I don't know, like 200, almost 300 pages long, but it's for like the real version, not the one we have in the simulator. We can't do everything that's available in real life, but we can do quite a bit with this plane. So let's get to our airport. All that's off. Let me change the date so we can make sure we get the correct air access system. My dad's birthday in there, December 15th. All right, and let me pull up Navigraph. Where should I pull it up? You know, I might as well just pull it right up here on the, on the laptop because I'm going to show you the SimLink system as well. So this is the only plane I've been able to do this with. It's pretty wild. That SimLink system, it tracks your plane live on Navigraph's 
uh, chart system that, that uh, I'm always referencing when I'm talking about flight plans, and things like that. So, all right, yeah, NCRG. Okay, all right, NCRG. All right, let's bring this back up. Let's make you full screen again. One more again. I was going to choose an airport a little closer, but that the other airport doesn't have any uh, departure charts available, so it wouldn't have been a very good tutorial if I can't show you everything. All right, let's see here. Ramp 1, I guess we can use. I've never been to this airport before, but it's ramp 5 look like. Let's do ramp 5. All right, let's click fly. All right. Man, it, now I'm gonna tell you right now, I, I apologize in advance if uh, the power, go, like if my power goes out or the internet cuts out, we are having some like biblical Type, like biblical type storms tonight in uh in maryland it is fucking nuts out here tonight i already lost the power once today internet went out once so and this plane may may wind up crashing the simulator as well because this plane has crashed it before but i'm hoping we have a pretty good chance of making it through uh turning off everything that we turned off so first things first with this plane here Let's go ahead and you have two battery switches and then two generator switches. You have your lights here. You have master oxygen, fresh air, probe heat, and then icing. That's really all the buttons you have, uh, you know, as far as like really like turning on equipment and operating controls. This is, you know, like lights and dimmers and stuff like that. And then turn the engine on. It's right down here. So let's get the battery and the generator on and we'll get the engine cranked up so we're not killing the battery. So we can go battery one, battery two, generator one, generator two, strobe lights, master oxygen and fresh air. We're gonna turn this switch on and then just click the switch above it. And that kicks the engine on. for everything to align before I start digging into the system. We're gonna do the multifunction display first. Uh, that's the heaviest with info, and that's also where we input the flight plan. Uh, there's no sense of going over the primary display because there's no flight plan, then there's no sense of going. In my mind, there's no sense of going over it. So, all right, let me make sure that live time is off. So I don't want anything kind of tripping us up data wise. Okay, so we're out here in the middle of nowhere. We should be fine. We have two screens in this plane, right? They both operate the same way. Okay. There's really no way to interact with these screens unless you use one of these three screens down below. Okay, Each one of these three screens is exactly the same. They, they both do the exact same thing. So you have PFD home, that's primary flight display home. You can look over here on the right. There's three buttons here. PFD is the button that we're lined up with. Okay, you can switch it from PFD to MFD, which is multifunction display. This is where you can bring up the map, traffic, weather, flight plan, procedures, uh, VNAV, all the systems of the uh, aircraft, utilities, SIM brief, which we're going to review tonight as well. 
the last button down here is the navigation and communications. Okay. Uh, from this screen, if you would like to input a VOR frequency or an ILS frequency, you would come over here to where it says audio and radios. Click on that button. You can adjust the volume of the beeping when you get close to it. Uh, if you want to change the frequency, you just come over to the little box where the frequencies are and just click on the box here. Input the frequency you want. And if you are keeping it as a standby frequency, meaning you're not activating it right away, you can just click enter. If it's something that you want to activate right now, you click this transfer button down here on the bottom and then it makes it now the main frequency okay so those are the three buttons here this down here does the range so when you're in map mode turning it left to right will you know zoom it in zoom it out and the button up top here when you're in multifunction display this one here will toggle you through it's kind of hard to see so so up here we have on the right we have map and we have traffic right if we were to use this knob on the upper right now to turn it it would actually change this box from traffic to map back and forth so you can operate so I don't really know what the purpose of that button is because you can just click on you know, click on it as well. Um, however, if you're trying to keep the screens split like they are now, if you now highlight the big knob, turn it to the left, we saw the screen black out, come back on. Now we're gonna be able to operate the screen on the right-hand side. Okay. Traffic, weather, this plane doesn't have a live weather uh, component to it. Uh, there, to my knowledge, there's no way of getting it into um, into uh, the simulator, not on Xbox at least. So, so if you want to, you know, if the way I normally have this, if I do have two screens, I'll usually keep one screen. I try to keep it separated, but a lot of times with this system, when you have two screens on multifunction display, it always seems like they're locked together in sync, right? Like it would make sense if you could have this screen here, control this, and this screen here in the center, control this, but that's not the way they have it. If you have this in multifunction display for both, when you switch from right to left, they're both going to be in sync. So that's just the way they have it. So now if you want to make this a full screen, let's say you want to do full screen for traffic, right? We would then take this, you know, take this knob here, turn it clockwise, and then click this full button here right. if you want to split the screens again you just make click it and now it goes half same thing with the map side if you want to change this so the map is full screen when the blue box is around map I know that says map settings but it, that's still the map button you would click full and then it would bring it full screen as well so that's basically the the three main the three main screens of uh, this system here so each one of these screens here map traffic and weather if you were to click on traffic see how it now flips the traffic settings if you were to click on this button again it brings up all the settings that's available for traffic. Now it is traffic settings here, controls traffic 
for all the systems in the airplane. There's a little window that you can put up here for traffic, right? I'll highlight it more when we go over the primary display. Even this little window here is controlled by the traffic settings that we just, you know, that we just started looking at, okay? So you have your transponder, you know, you have TA only, altitude recording, on, standby, autos, pretty much where I leave it since it's a simulator, like I'm not communicating with anybody. Uh, so I don't really see a reason to, to really play with it a whole lot. But if you're doing multiplayer and you're, you know, maybe doing bat sim or something like that, then, you know, certainly maybe playing with some of these options uh, would be a good thing for you. Uh, altitude display, you can do relative or absolute. So that's, you know, either above ground or above sea level. You can set, you know, your altitude range for your display. You can turn the traffic display on or off. You can turn the motion vector on or off for, uh, you know, the altitude. And then you can also show the duration. You know, you can choose anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute. I'm not super familiar with what vector duration does. I, I understand it has to do with the length of time that, that the motion shows, but, you know, it's not something I ever use, but it is available if you want to use it. Weather I don't typically go into too often because there's no uh, option for me with this airplane. Uh, but if you do have capability of doing weather with your plane, if you click on this weather button again, it'll bring up weather radar, which now changes the screen to weather radar screen. And then there's connects weather, which will show the weather on the actual map itself. Home, under map settings. Now if we click on map, click on map settings. So I saved this one for last because this one's kind of, you know, the, the more detailed I think of the, of the three and maybe the one that's used the most. I know with me, when I first set up this airplane, uh, it was the one that I used the most. So you can have traffic on or off for the map, right? So that's off. That's on when it's a green bar. If we go under settings here, that brings us back to that traffic settings page. We can click the back button. Terrain, we have absolute or relative. So the way this works, if you've flown any of the other planes in a simulator where um, like like the Diamond DA-62 or any of the Cessna airplanes that have the Farman 1000 systems, there's, a, there's a, a button on the bottom of the screen where you can change from topographical to relative. So what this, sh what this is showing is that since it's in red, that means we're less than 100 feet to the ground. If we were flying and this was in yellow, that means we're between 100 and 1,000 feet above ground. If it's in green, we're between 1,000 and 2,000 feet. And if it's uh, black where there's no color, it means we're over 2,000 feet in the air. We do have a scale here you can turn on, which is kind of what I was just telling you about. You can also change the terrain range. You know, so uh, as far as the, the way the colors operate, you know, so the way I had it set up was at a thousand feet. So if I'm below a thousand feet, then it'll be a certain color. You can change that setting if you would like to. If that's something that you change, you can just click the back button and it'll keep it for you. Okay. Uh, we don't have uh, the TALS system, which I believe is the, the warning system for terrain. I think that's a terrain something warning system. Uh, I don't have any airplane in the simulator that has an actual warning system for the terrain other than, you know, the main system, you know, telling you to pull up. So let's click 
back. The next option we have is for the radar system for weather, which you know we don't really have an option for. Uh, so that's it for sensors. The inset window is this window in black right here on the lower half of the map. So you can turn that on or off. And you can make it from leg to leg or cumulative where it shows the total trip. So when we do when we plug in our flight plan here in a few minutes, this will show uh, you know, our track, the distance between the legs, the altitude that we're supposed to fly, how much fuel is going to be remaining, the ETA, VNAV information with time of descent and all that. Uh, so that's usually something that I leave on. You can certainly have it on or off if you like. We have this aviation window. So you can set up so the map shows the different classes of airspace, like B class, C class. You can have it show airports, VOR stations, intersections, non-directional, uh, the NDB is a non-directional. The ADF is pretty much what that is. I don't remember what the B stands for, but, uh, and then user waypoints, you know, if you have the capability of setting up your own waypoints. Uh, you can certainly click on settings from here and you can adjust how far out you want the map to go to show these different classes of airspace. You can set the map to show different types of airports and how far out on the map you want them to show. Okay. You have the same thing with VOR. So actually, let me center this a little bit more. Same thing with VORs with settings, okay? The intersections, the ADFs, the waypoints, these mileages here you can click on and change as well. The last little box here is other. And this is for if, um, if you're flying and you have where your direction is is forward, right? So north, it's not north up, it's like whatever direction you're flying in. If you zoom the map out to a thousand nautical miles right now, the map's automatically gonna turn back to north up. You can turn track vectoring on and for how long, and you can also turn wind vectoring on for how long too. I never turn this on because I don't have access to weather. So that's it for the center right area here. If you come over here to the left side, we have orientation. That's for north up, track up, or heading up. I'll do map sync last. Map detail, I always have on the lowest setting for this airplane, because uh, that's what was recommended in the reading material. But this is where you can set how much detail the map shows, like airspaces, airports, waypoints, ADFs, things like that. So I always have it on the least amount. You can kind of see it starting to populate as we, you know, change it to most. So I always have it on least because that's what was recommended when I, when I got the airplane. The map sync. So if you click it, you can do all on side or off, okay? If you do on side, you can choose if you want this left screen or this right screen to control the map because you know since these three screens are interchangeable you know uh, you want to be able to if you're changing the map and you're over here in this section you want to be able to change the map where the map is showing so you can do you know left or right you can turn it off so each screen with the map will do its own each map section that you have up will do its own thing. So like if you split this first screen and you have a map on here, if you have sync off, then this map is not gonna be tied into this map anymore. So you have to change them individually. So I usually keep it on all and you have primary flight display right or left, multifunctional display left or right. 
I'm going to do multi-function display left because I'm using this one here and the map was always on the left side of the screen. So I'm going to choose left. And now whenever I change the map on the left of this multi-function display here, it'll change it everywhere. If you choose the right side of the multi-function display, then when you have the map on this half over here, that'll control the map for everywhere. Okay. So that's it for the map settings. It's a lot so far, isn't it? It's a, it's a lot of shit. It is. It's fucking a lot in this airplane. It's crazy. Um, let's kind of go over these bottom three first, and then we'll kind of work our way up. We'll do the flight plan last, because that seems to be the most in-depth with, uh, you know, with what, at least with what I use on a regular basis. I seem to use the flight plan the most, you know, because you got to enter the flight plan, you got to, uh, you know, put in the waypoints, the procedures and all that. So we'll go from right to left. We'll do it uh, Hebrew style. So if you click nearest, that's going to give you the option of nearest airports, intersections, VOR stations, user waypoints, and NDB, you know, ADF stations, okay? So if we were to click, uh, let's say VOR, the closest VOR station we have is less than a mile away. This is the frequency. That's the bearing. That's the name of the station, okay? If you click on the VOR station itself, you can set it as a, as a direct waypoint. This symbol right here, this D with a line and an arrow through it, that means direct. So you can set it directly. You can get the info. You know, it's longitude, latitude coordinates, the distance, the wind speed right now, the frequency, and show it on the map as well. So it's not really going to show anything now because we're already here. <laughs> so, uh, but if we were farther away, it would show it on, on the map. And this is available for airports, ADFs, user-defined waypoints. These other ones that are grayed out, we don't have access to. So, I don't know. There's, uh, if you go in the drawer, there's Pepto. Yeah, I can give you some some Midol also. Well, I don't know. It's the only medicine I have. But there's some pink chewables. You see them? Yeah. yeah. However many are in there, just take. All right. So take. Well, you can eat all three if you want. But two is what the recommended dosage is. All right. Did you take your medicine after you ate? Well, that might be why you're feeling bad. that'll settle your stomach a little bit or maybe it's something else well if that'll you know a little bit to work if that doesn't uh, do anything you know I'll, I don't know about I might have more of that medicine upstairs but I don't I don't think I do do you want some um, antacid well here come here I'll give you these two just come here just take these just in case just take the whole thing I have more in, uh, in my bag. Sure. Let me know if you need anything else, okay? Love you, too. All right, sorry about that. It's my daughter. All right, so that goes over nearest here. So the next one here is waypoint info. Pretty much the exact same thing, but we don't have any waypoints assigned right now. So you, know, you can pretty much do the same thing with it you know, nearest airports, nearest. So let's do the, let's do this nearest airport deal here. So again, if we click on this, it gives you a screen where you can input any airport you want at that point. Waypoint options again, you can do direct, show it on the map. We're already here, so there's no reason to show it on the map. 
It has the direction, the distance, the coordinates, the elevation, what type of airport it is, the button on the left here, frequencies. This gives you all the different frequencies for communication, VOR information, ILS information, all the frequencies, not only for like navigation, but also for communication as well. We don't have any weather, but we do have METAR information. Uh, so as of January 10th, you know, here's the wind speeds, scattered clouds, the current barometer is 1012. It's, you know, three knots of wind, few clouds, scattered clouds to 4,200 feet. So you do have that info. If we go to charts, this will bring up. Now you have to have SimBrief connected, which I'll show you how to do. But if you were to click on charts, any airport, any airport that has charts available, will bring the charts up. So this looks like this is a chart for uh, an ILS landing for runway 34 left, I think. But if we click on this first chart, this brings up the airport information chart. Now, if you look up here it actually shows our airplane on the map here so that's one thing this airplane does uh, the Piper Meridian that I bought does the same thing if you were to bring up say like you know uh, an approach chart for an ILS landing and you have the chart up here it will actually show your airplane on the chart flying the route it's pretty cool same thing if you have an arrival chart or any chart, or even this chart for uh, the airport itself. So, and every chart that's available for this airport is in this list here. That would be the same for any airport that has any charts, okay? The next button on the right here is runways. Here's the two runways, the surface, the, the length, the height, I'm sorry, the length and the width. Uh, of the runway and then the last button that we have access to is procedures and these are the different approaches that are available the departures that are available the arrivals that are available and again if you click on it you can actually program it if you would like to so if you're if you're flying and you need to switch to a different airport you know, if you're flying and you need to switch to a different airport, you know, you just come to nearest, click airport, right? Choose the airport you want by clicking on the name of it. You can set it directly, or you can go to airport info, go to procedures, choose the procedure you want and load it into your system here. We're going to go over this screen in more detail when we set the flight plan. The last button on the bottom left here is this performance one. This one, there's only two options. You have speed bugs, takeoff and landing. Now you can actually go ahead and set your own speed if you want to for rotation, for VY is climbing speed. Uh, I forget what VX is, but you can go in, and if you want to change it, you just click on the number, program your own number in, click enter. There it is. You can choose all on, all off. Same thing with landing as well. All on, all off. And you can choose your own speeds as well. Uh, aircraft systems next here so you can reset the stall and the offset speeds and all that uh, you know you can reset that here to whatever um, you know the the factory settings are for this particular airplane that Microsoft has programmed so you can click that you don't see it do anything you just click the button and it does it uh, these buttons down here are grayed out if you want to test the systems in the airplane we have this little stethoscope here I think it's, it's pretty cute actually so we click on that it says ready to execute 
So let's do our pre-flight test. Fire. 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 It'll run through Fire. everything for you. Fire. Fire. Stall. 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 This is done and done, so. Now we have landing gear. So actually let's go ahead and make this. Give me one second. Let me make this full screen here. Uh, and full screen, and let's go back to aircraft systems. So now, all right. Well, give me a second here. second I'm trying to get that airplane full screen now maybe this plane doesn't do it I can do it in the TVM so I guess you can't do it in this in this airplane but anyways It'd be nice if they worked the same for all the airplanes. They kind of do, but there's little quirky differences between them. So if you click on landing gear, it's going to show you the status of it. You know, all the landing gear info. Ice protection, if you click that, it tells you the outside air temperature, if, you know, high dot heat's on, if the, you know, probes are on. So if we were to turn them on right now, let's turn on the high dot heat. That's this button here see that now says on and then if we were to turn on some anti-ice now you can see everything is turning on in green so it gives you a pretty good pretty good visual representation of what's going on with the anti-ice system if we click on an environment and pressure this tells us all the info for the cabin which we really can't change a lot of it I mean the only thing we can really do is just change the the master oxygen and fresh air. Other than that, we really can't change much unless you come over here. And if you want to pretend that we have passengers, then we can like put on, you know, certain temperatures and fan speeds and all that. And it will adjust accordingly, you know, after it's on for a while. So this plane, there's no passengers simulated the the piper the piper meridian has passengers that you have to feed and and give coffee to like every 20 minutes or the circuit and they start getting really bitchy it's kind of funny actually so all right uh next up here we have electrical power this gives us our generator information battery alternator and all that information we have engine and fuel and then status and info so this tells us like parking brake, cabin doors, baggage doors, you know, oxygen, you know. Now this also has something pretty useful. It has takeoff distance on the ground, takeoff distance if you have an obstacle over 50 feet, uh, and then the climb gradient, you know, like what the best angle of climb is. So I think that's pretty interesting that uh, that, that has that on there. Again, this also has the outside temperature, uh, the density of the altitude, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. All right, so that's the aircraft systems page. Next up, we have utilities. So, let's start from the bottom here. So you have checklist. You can click on the button, and it brings up checklist up here if you can see it on this navigation screen here and now you can't you can't you know click on the screen here right so you just have to as you do these things they may say complete they may not uh, but it's you know just a reference if you want to use it you know engine start you know but there's really not I mean, there's only a few buttons to push, but if you want to use this checklist, you certainly can. 
you have timer. So if you're doing like a procedure turn or um, anything where you're timing something, you know, you can certainly use this. You can count up, count down, reset it, start it. You have this setup option here. Now this setup screen, we have avionics setup. So there's a few things you can change here. You can change the time format to uh, 12 hours, 24 hours, or UTC time. You can adjust the format of the flight director. You can change the spacing of the communications, the type of airports that show up in the nearest airport list, the type of length. Uh, you can adjust the units, so you can change this from magnetic to, to um, true. You can change this from nautical miles to uh, the speed and distance. You can change the nautical miles to regular miles or miles per hour. You can change, you know, vertical speed. You can change the temperature. You know, you can change the fuel from, you know, kilograms to pounds and things like that. Nothing for alerts that we have available. Now these MFD fields, right? has field one, field two, field three, field four, all the way up to field eight. These show fields up on top of this multifunction display. Right now we have ground speed, you know, um, the, the uh, directional track, the actual track, ETA, um, the, uh, the, um, I forget the name of it, but it, it, it'll show, I know the BRG, what it does, it'll show like the next, like NAV1, NAV2, your ADF, your flight management system, um, oh, bearing indicator, uh, distance, ETA in UTC time, and then what time in UTC time it thinks we're landing. So if you want to change any of those, you would just come back down here and just that and you would just click on the blue box and you can choose whatever you want to see and then audio you can change it from a female voice to a male voice if you like Navigraph on the other hand so this is where you can sync up your Navigraph if you have a Navigraph subscription I do um, you have to plug in To, to, to do it, you would have to go to account and it would give you like a, um, like one of those Q, QR codes that you scan, or you can go to the website and plug in a certain code. But this is where you can do Simlink, which I'm gonna show you on Navigraph after we get our flight plan set. This, this Simlink, this airplane is the only airplane I know of in Microsoft Simulator for the Xbox that has this system. This will give you a true reading of your airplane from the simulator, and it'll show you on Navigraph's uh, charts page, and it'll give you all different types of data, uh, you know, about it, the, the angle of attack, the wind speeds, the ground speed, uh, it's crazy. Sim brief, load procedures, load airways. So that's for bringing in the flight plan, because you can actually import your flight plan directly to the system. So this is saying, yes, that we want it to load the procedures as well and any airways that we're using. Okay. Oh, that's for setup. GPS status, I've never once used, but this gives you all the, all the info for the GPS satellites that the airplane is using for its, uh, you know, for its, for its system. Lighting control. You can change the master lighting, you know, up and down, you know, as necessary. Initialization. So this is a, a pretty good system here. So we already did the systems test, right? So now if we were to click initial fuel, I think this with the forward operating base, which is what we, you know, have in the setup screen, like, you know, here under weight and balance. 
so we can click back. Now we have that check mark there. Let's click weight and balance. You can program any number you want in here. Same thing with payload. And then take off. Sync this with the forward operating base. And now that is checked off as well. Flight plan will come back to. Then we have weight and fuel, which is what we just saw. Payload, takeoff, okay? All right. The sim brief option here. You click on that. This now has all the different um, uh, flights that I set up recently. So I don't see where flight I did for here is though. Oh you know why? I never I never did it in Simbrief. Shit. Well, let's do that now. And then we'll bring it over. My bad, I thought I set it up in Simbrief. I guess I didn't. So let's go to Simbrief. This tutorial shouldn't be too much longer. I mean we still have a, quite a bit of information to go over. Um, but I'm down for it. So just hang with me. We'll get through it. Just amazing how much info this, this airplane has in it. It's just, it's nuts. All right, let's go here. Come on now. All right, let's create new flight. I do have uh, an outdated air rack chosen here. That's on purpose. Microsoft Simulator has not updated their um, air rack system. This is like all the waypoints, charts, you know, airways, procedures. Microsoft hasn't updated theirs yet, so um, I'm using the version that they're using right now. So let's type in our airplane. Mama, and what were we departing on? I think it was NCRG. Unload this. Yeah, NCRG to NTAA. NCRG. AA. Archer time doesn't matter right now. Let's go ahead and choose the vision jet. So that is down here. Go to 50. All right. That message was saying they couldn't find any alternate airports. So I guess we can do this. This one here. That's a different. That's different than the one I have, but I guess we can use this one. So if you want to change the flight plan, you can do it here. Just afterwards, just click Analyze Route, and if it's in green, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and click Generate Flight Plan. All right, so now that that is set, we should be able to go into Navigraph now. Not Navigraph, I'm sorry. Well, we could go into Navigraph, but we can come in into here now. Let's refresh the list. Here we go. Yo mama. Let's click on request. Now we can import it. There's our flight plan. So that's one way of doing the flight plan. Uh, I'm going to actually delete this flight plan and enter it in myself. So you can kind of see how to enter it, but that's one way to fill in the flight plan, okay? So let's delete this flight plan. And 
last button before we start entering our flight plan I want to show you is charts. So if we click on that, that again just brings up the charts for, you know, the airport where we're at. If you want to click on that charts button again, it'll bring up a screen now where you can bring up all the different charts available for, you know, that for whatever airport you had in last, okay? Now you can sync this as well. So, like, if after we set our flight plan and we click sync, once we get close to Tahiti and we click charts, it should bring up all the charts for Tahiti automatically, okay? So, let me bring up, um, let me see, let me bring up Navigraph on my iPad here and we'll enter this flight plan in ourselves. going to bring up the flight plan that I created, not the one that we imported. Not that it really matters. Okay. So let's go ahead and input a flight plan. Let's make this a uh, full screen. And I'm going to click on map so the whole thing is a map. All right, so direct to we know what that does you select the waypoint if you want to or you can go to nearest and select it we kind of went over that already procedures we have no procedures yet but this will bring you directly to the page where you can choose the standard instrument departure arrival or approach okay to set a flight plan manually we're going to click this middle box here for flight plan okay we're going to click add origin we're going to type in, today we're going to type in NCGR. Oh, NCRG. Sorry about that. Uh, backspace. NCRG. All right, we're going to click enter. And then we're going to add our destination. And that is NTAA. Enter. All right, when I do flight plans and I'm programming them, I always like to plug in the, the departure first. So let's go ahead and set our departure. So for that, we're gonna click on this procedure tab over here. Again, this tab up top, that's direct to a waypoint. We don't need that. So let's click procedure. Let's click on departure. And we are gonna choose choose departure first and the departure I have in mind today is this toke 1p Our transition is LOTRA runway 8 if you want to filter departures you can filter them by runway if you would like to if you would like to preview this departure we can click on preview we can show it on a chart, we can show it on a map. So if you click map, here's the departure on the map. We come back here and click show on chart. It will bring up the departure chart. And again, there's our airplane. So we're taking off. If we were flying this route today, we would take off and we would come up here Lotra, and then we pick up a highway and fly that out to Tahiti, okay? So let's get rid of the preview. And let's go down to load. Let's load that in. All right. So next up, we're going to enter uh, the rest of our route, okay? So we're going to click this down arrow. going to click add in route waypoint now let's type in this waypoint it's l-e-m-u-n islands let's click enter now from here we're going to enter an airway to do that we're going to click on 
the actual waypoint that the airway starts from, okay? Let's click that. Now, whenever you click on an airway, I mean, a, a, a waypoint in this, it's go, it's gonna bring up all these different options. Remove waypoint, hold at waypoint, waypoint info, load airway, which we're gonna do, activate a leg to that waypoint, insert this waypoint before or after another waypoint. Now, the hold waypoint, that's an interesting one. That one is like for like a holding pattern. So if we click on that, you can actually tell the system if it's gonna be left hand or right hand turns, which direction we're flying into it, if it's inbound or outbound leg of the, uh, the holding pattern, each leg's time, like one minute, the course and the leg time. It's pretty interesting that you can set that up. So let's click on the waypoint again. Let's click on load airway. This is our airway here. And now let's click exit. And we are actually exiting at ATURE. Now let's load that airway. Okay. We have one more waypoint to, oh, you know, I don't think we do actually have another waypoint to add in. Let's go to our destination because I think that waypoint is part of the arrival. So let's go back to procedures. Let's click on arrival. And our arrival is ID UT3V. So this one here. I'm going to choose runway four because that's the runway that we're landing on. And again, if you want to see it on a chart or a map, you could choose that. Load that up. Oh no, the screens went off. Motherfucker. Oh man. Well, they're back on. I should have flight plan went away. Yep. All right. If they go off again, we may have to do a part two of this. Uh, so we'll we'll go. We'll keep going. If they turn off again. I'll do a part two tomorrow at the same time. Hopefully, same time. But let's keep going. Maybe we'll be okay now that they turned off once. All right, NTAA. And procedure, departure. Ultra, load. That's one thing with these screens and this this particular airplane. The screens go off often, which is what they said after I bought the plane. But I'm trying to lessen that from happening by turning off all that other stuff I turned off in the beginning. All right, load airway. And it's a tour. All right, we're back to where we were at. So now let's click on procedure again let's click on arrival and we were doing ID UT 3V let's do runway 4 let's load very good and the last thing we're going to do here is procedure again we're going to do our approach now and the one I chose was I think it was Z ILSZ and Obini is our transition. Now I am going to plug in what our minimums are. So according to the arrival chart, it's 250 is the minimums. So I clicked on this minimums box here. Type in 250, click enter. Now on our main display, up top here, you can see it now says Barrow Minimum 250. So we're going to load this. All right, our flight plan is now almost set. We do have to come up here and where it wants us to add another waypoint, we're just going to click Done. And we need to set our cruising altitude. 
So what I usually do is the first box I can click on altitude, I do. So this token here, I'm going to click on this box right here, okay? We're going to click on that. And I'm going to program in, like, say, 25,000 feet. So let's do flight level. Two, five, zero. Click enter. I'm gonna just I just leave these alone. But if you want to change the constraints, you can. You can choose which phase, climber descent you want it, and you can choose what type. So right now this is at twenty five thousand feet, but you can choose at or below or at or above, uh, which is these lines here so if it was at or below the line would be above the numbers if you wanted it to be at or above then the line would be underneath so let's click enter and now our flight plan is set for 25,000 feet and these other altitudes have started populating for VNAV okay the rest of this information here flight path angle, speed, and all that, uh, that usually uh, starts populating once we get rolling, okay? So that's setting up the flight plan. If we go to VNAV, right now we have VNAV enabled. This speed down here in Magenta, this is what our flight management system um, has as like our target speed. Okay, you can click on that and change that to whatever you want. You can do it in knots or in Mach numbers, okay? You click on climb. Here's the different attributes for climbing. The climb schedule, the altitude limits, and all that. If you want to set your own climb schedule, just click on the box here. You can do pilot defined, high speed climb, cruise climb, maximum climb rate. Same thing with altitude and speed limits. You can set that up for whatever you want. Okay. Cruise altitude. You can program whatever you want in here. And same thing with descent angle. Now, I usually leave this at like minus three. That usually puts us at uh, like around 2,000 vertical feet per minute. If you wanted to go at a slower rate, like 1,250 feet per minute or 1,500 vertical feet per minute, if you were to click on this descent schedule, go to pilot defined, put in the speed that you want, put in the Mach number that associates with it. You have to do a little research to figure that out. And that will go ahead and change this here. So if you wanted to go down at like 200 knots, right? That should change this here. Let's try it. This is, I, I've never tried this before. I've never actually tried this before. So let's put in 200. Uh, I don't know what Mach number should be. Point, I guess we'll do like point 0.3. Uh, zero, 0.3. still has the angle there. I know there's a way of changing the angle because I've done it before myself. It might not be in this section here. It might be on her profile, actually. Dude. I have changed it before. Maybe this plane won't let me do it. I can do it in the, uh, in the TBM. second let me look that up real quick if i had some old music i'd play it for you right now give me give me like 30 seconds let me let me plug it in um the reference guide here so i thought there, there was there is a way to change it i just don't know actually i'll just pull it up here on the screen so you guys can look at what i'm looking at pause the game aviation folder 
and let's go down. That's going to be a lot. Let's uh, here and we'll check out VNAV. Normal table of contents. Okay. Nav and planning vertical navigation. Sixty five. Okay. Nav constraints. I have set that angle before. Been a little bit since I've done it. And I've only flown this plane a few times because of the screen issue. Now the TBM and the and the longitude I've flown a lot. But uh all right, flight path angle. Okay, vertical display. BSD mode, inset window, settings, uh, VNAV, altitude, on map, loading procedure. I don't see a way to change the, the path to angle on this plane. The Garmin 1000 system, you can do it very easily. Uh, let's leave, give me just a couple more seconds. You know, vertical speed target for the flight path angle button. Let me, uh, all right, let me put back on the main page here. And let's see here. Let me go into flight plan because I think I've done it before from the flight plan. Let's go down to descent. And it's three. Looking for like the first minus three. There we go. I knew I could do it. All right, so if you want to change the angle of your descent, okay, the first box you see with the descent angle, click on that box, and now you can plug in whatever flight path angle you want. So if you want negative 1.5, just type in 1.5, zero, click enter, and now this would change automatically. So now everything changed. You were at 5,000 feet now instead of 6,000 for there. So let's go ahead and change that again to, to three. And we'll see everything change back again. So anyway, so if you want to change the angle, that's the way to do it. And again, VNAV, you can turn it on or you can turn it off with this right here, okay? So sorry about that little hiccup with looking it up, but I don't want to bullshit you guys, and I wasn't really familiar with that, so I wanted to reference it real quick, but we got it. So the last option under this flight plan here is flight path options show the whole flight plan on the map. You can adjust your map settings that we showed in the very beginning. You can rename this flight plan or you can delete it all together. That's kind of the long and short of the multi-function display here, okay? Now, 
this VNAV here, this is not going to change or show any info until we're either rolling or until we get to climbing altitude, okay? So that's that for the multifunction display. Now we have our primary flight display. So this one is quite a bit simpler, which is why I saved, saved it for last. So we have nav source up here on the top left. If we click on that, we have FMS, your flight management system. Click on it once, we have localizer one. Click on it again, localizer two. And then click on it again, we have FMS again. We have an OBS option here. Bearing indicator, if we click on one, for NAV1, NAV2, FMS, ADF1 and 2. Does the same thing for bearing indicator 2. We have speed bugs, which we had on the other page as well. Okay. We have timers again, which we reviewed on the other page. Minimums. Again, this are you know minimums for our landing today traffic map if you click on this it brings up the traffic map here now if you want to adjust the range of this map you would come down to this little knob here and tune it in or out okay same thing with this map over here if you want to adjust the map you would come down to here and zoom it in or out Then I don't have a touchpad, buddy. I can't pinch or zoom. It's not a it's not a PlayStation controller. All right. So that's that for the traffic map. And then we have primary flight display map settings. So it's essentially the same same setup that we had before. You know the type of uh, display it shows for the terrain, traffic, weather radar. Now you have HSI map, and when you do that, it changes this little circle here to like an actual map, not just the bearing indicator, but it actually has the, the course and all that. And again, you can make the terrain absolute, relative. You can turn it off. settings again you can go into all the settings inset map is the map over here same type of options traffic inset and then map detail again like we had before on the other side Boom. and then the last option here is PFD settings for primary flight display settings you can do full or split. Okay. And again, if you were doing split, let's see here. Pretty sure. Oh, yeah, never mind. are doing split like it is here this first navigation unit you have to go in the multifunction display and then you can use the knob to zoom in or out or change it to traffic or the weather or the flight plan you know and all that kind of stuff okay so let's go back to primary flight display let's put this on full angle of attack which is right up here. You can have it on auto, on or off. Now SVT terrain, that shows like the actual ground underneath the airplane. So you could turn that on or off. I usually have that off because I don't want to do anything to really uh, mess with the, the chance of this screen going out or not. And the last options we have down here, we have wind option. You have one, two, and three. 
one is usually heading and crosswind, and then options two and three are like directional and speed and all that. Time format again, we can change from UTC to local 12 or 24 hour. And then communication frequency, spacing, and we can select our units from either hectopascals or inches of, you know, inches of mercury. And we can enable an overlay. So if you would like the METAR altitude to show here, you can have it as an overlay. So you'll have, you know, the actual and then the one with the, the barometer, uh, you know, built in as well. So that's it kind of for the screens. The last thing I, I kind of wanted to show you uh, with this what time is it actually? It's only 9.30. Maybe we'll take off and do a little flying. We have this speed reference here and this AT button. Okay. So if you were to click on this AT button here, that would turn on automatic throttle. Click on FMS. The plane is going to follow whatever the flight management systems speed references are for the whole trip for wherever it's programmed, takeoff, cruise, descent. You can do manual mode, and then you can adjust the speed with this uh, roller there. And then we have fuel control left, right, or center. Look at that little secret door. Put your weed in there. Alternate gear extension. Ah, oh, gotcha. All right. So, yeah, why don't, we, why don't we take off and do a little flying, actually, now that we've sat in this plane all day. Uh, let's turn our landing lights. Let's plug in 25,000 feet. I'm going to refuel the plane too. Right, let's plug in 25,000 feet. to adjust our trim for takeoff, which we'll do momentarily. Let's click Nav, and we can click the automatic button, turn that on, and the director, oh, it's not working. That's probably because the screens went out. Well, I guess we're not going to do any flying tonight. Well, you know what? I can probably... Let me see. Maybe if I get out of the airplane and go back into it. I mean, all I got to do is just bring in the flight plane real quick. That only takes a couple of seconds. Let's see if we can do a little bit of flying. I'll check with my daughter, too. Make sure she's okay. I thought that was the fuel box, but I might be wrong. And that's runway 26. This is runway 8. Okay. Because yeah, I usually go for a couple hours on stream, so, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to do this whole flight. Who knows? I will take a... If, if we do wind up doing, like, most of this flight, I'm gonna break away for a second while it's while it's cruising so I can check on her and I love streaming and I love you know being there for everybody online to go over some things but daughter family is definitely more important that's the truth I always keep it 100 with you guys and you girls if any if any any chicks are watching this I always keep it 100 with you. I love y'all, but family's important. All right, let's go ahead and let's turn on some shit. So let's turn on batteries. Turn on. That on. Turn off 
have strobe lights, master oxygen, fresh air. It's getting sticky, this frame rate. And let's click start. For some reason, at airports lately, the simulator's been getting like really wonky. Like it's just strange. I'm actually gonna bring in the flight from Simbrief, so let me bring that into Navigraph on my tablet or my iPad. While that's lining up. That's good. Let me see how much fuel Simbrief thinks we need. And they think we need about 600. Let's come up here. Set this for 600. good and our total takeoff weight's probably maxed out according to them yeah so I'll just leave well we'll plug in a little bit of weight too I guess we have us about 2648 so let's plug in 2648 or as close as we can get to it all right very good so that's good let's click out of that here and let's go multifunction display let's do full screen well, actually let's click map and let's do full screen I'm under sim brief here let's click your mama all right and let's click on procedures and put our approach in. The approach doesn't populate automatically because we can't choose that on sim brief. And we had 250 was our minimums. So let's load that. Let's get rid of this here. Let's plug in 25,000 feet for our altitude today. Let's click enter. Enter. That's good. Let's go to utilities. Let's go to weight and fuel. That's fine. Let's sync this with the forward operating base. Very good. Let's click home. Let's click systems. Let's go to uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. wrong menu. Let's go under utilities and go to initialize. And we still have to test the systems. Crap. All right, let's go here. Systems test. Let's do that real quick. Higher, 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 higher. Stall, stall, stall. All right, that's all good. back to utilities initialization like everything is done all right accept this let's go to performance let's go to speed bugs let's turn all them on and we are pretty much good to go wait 
eight. Let me zoom in a little bit because I don't really know where runway eight is. Okay, so it's over to our. Oh, you know what we can do? I'm such an idiot. We can bring up our chart. Our charts. Chart again. There we go. Like that. And, oh, under chart options, by the way, you can choose day or night. You can choose all the sections, or you can look at different sections. leave it on plan here that way we can see our airplane a little better let's go ahead and turn the pie dot heat on and we need to get our takeoff trim green so let me set that I have that as kind of like a shortcut on my controller here Takeoff trim is up, and we don't need really need any flaps for takeoff. So, all right, let's get on out of here. Oh, let's set our altitude now that we can set it. Should work now. Now that we reset the plane. I'm not doing anything with the barometer because. I don't have live weather on. But if you did want to change the barometer, that button is located right up here in between the two screens. Push it in for standard, turn it left to right to you know, adjust it accordingly. All right, let's click nav. There we go, now our systems are working. And let me click the automatic button. Very good. I forget we may have to click that again when we uh, when we take off. But all right, let's uh, turn on our landing lights and let's get out of here. Let's remove the parking brake. And oh, maybe this is like my favorite livery that's in this airplane. It's called shuttle. It's supposed to look like the space shuttle. I think it's so cool looking. So according to the map, we have a little bit of a ways to go for runway eight. Now once we're in the air, I'm gonna show you the telemetry feature from Navigraph. That, uh, like I said in the beginning, it's on, I've only seen it available uh, on this airplane. I've never seen it on any other airplane. I wish they had it available on other airplanes because it's, it's a dope feature. It's really cool. All I have live weather off, live time off. I have all traffic off. I have photogrammetry turned off, multiplayer turned off. Any anything that could absorb data, I have off. As the recommendation of the makers of this plane, Flight FX, the name of the, the company that bamboozled me into buying this airplane. I love the airplane. I just wish they would have been upfront about 
about it. You don't find out that it's broken until you buy it. That's kind of shitty. Sink our heading. All right, and let's roll. Flaps up. Now what I did was, when I looked down here with the mouse, so I clicked on the automatic button, the FMS button here, pilot, then flight level control. Because now this flight level control is going to follow our FMS speed, which is 165 for our climb. This takeoff thruster will change eventually. The system will do it automatically. At least it should. Let me click on the auto button again. Maybe I deactivated it by clicking it. There we go. Okay. I deactivated it when I clicked on it by accident. So there we go. Now we're in climb mode. Again, you know, we can go into VNAV here if we want to change our climb. Climb here. We can do cruise climb, high speed climb, or pilot climb. So I'm I'm curious if this will change, you know, automatically, you know, from cruise climb, you know, and all that. I don't I don't think it will, but it looks like that's the same max and uh, cruise climb, but. suggestion that uh, the developers had is to leave this map like five miles or less so I'll leave it at four for now right. I'll be back in like a minute I want to go check on my daughter real quick
girl smoking weed in her room yesterday. Yeah. So, you know, I don't really know how I should feel about that. Because it's, it's legal now in Maryland. And, to be honest, I was smoking it when I was her age. Yeah, I mean, even though she's under 18. Now, let's turn our landing lights off. Even if she's under 18, it's not a criminal offense. So, it's what it is, I guess. Switch these screens here. Now this one should be traffic. Yep, there, there we go. Actually, let's bring up uh, our chart. We got it synced, so there's our airplane on our departure. Altitude is 13,000 feet, so even though uh, you know, we're not playing with the barometric pressure tonight, I'm still gonna put it standard. Cabin pressure seems to be doing okay. up our heading and what I'm gonna do is let's go over to Navigrate let me show you some cool shit this is my first time actually being able to do this this is pretty cool I think So, Navigraph has this telemetry feature. That's the symlink, you know, that we uh, that I showed you in the plane. So, because we have that active now, it has our indicated airspeed down here on the bottom, our indicated altitude, our vertical speed mode, our magnetic heading, our GPS track, our bank angle, our rate of turn, distance to the destination, Bearing speed, descent to destination. It is freaking crazy. I have never, never once been able to use that feature. So cool. What kind of metrics they have? True airspeed, indicated airspeed, true altitude, altitude relative to pressure. Well, that's pretty cool. Switch these around too. I don't think we can switch them. We have true airspeed. Is that one of the indicated airspeed? Now let me do true airspeed also. Now you know what I bet you can do. I bet you can change them here. Yeah, maybe not. That is really cool. So anyway, so I thought. 
I thought this was pretty cool. I've never been able to do this before. Let's get back to the regularly scheduled program. I'll hang up for a little bit longer now that she's doing okay. Now, let me do standard pressure. Oh, I can't turn on live weather. I was going to try turning it on and seeing what happens. Sometimes when you turn it on, sometimes when you turn on live weather after you take off and you're away from the airport, sometimes it'll allow you to, to uh, you know, fly the plane and not lose your screens. Sure, with the the uh, max altitude is of this airplane. I think it's like thirty thousand feet. I think. I wonder if uh, wonder if it's available. It's like some sort of info here. Interesting. This, uh, this information over here, on this screen. Come on. Okay, now there we go. When we were, when we were on the ground, this was for takeoff. And it looks like it's changing in live time. It is. It's changing in live time because we're getting lighter as we're as we're flying. That is pretty freaking interesting. That is pretty cool. start calculating once we get to our cruising altitude. Very cool man. This plane's got a lot of cool stuff in it. I just wish that it I just wish that it was more reliable. Like I'd like to be able to play it with traffic enabled and the photogrammetry. I'd love to be able to download the world scenery. Can't do that either. That world scenery knocks out like every screen in this damn simulator goes away when you download world scenery. I downloaded a bush trip. One bush trip. Not the whole scenery pack, just one flipping bush trip. And none of my screens will work on the airplanes. That never happened until Microsoft's last patch. I don't call it an update because it's not an update. Updates make things better. This was a patch. And they patched this thing backwards. It, it, it doesn't work anymore than we get used to. It's worse. Way worse. Way worse. 
I think there's a car company called Fisker that makes a car like with you know, with an intake on the on the back that looks like that. I know McLaren makes one, and I think Lamborghini has one as well like that. But I think Fisker was the first car I ever saw that had that. I think that's pretty cool. I know this is the engine, but relative to cars. I saw a car a long time ago that had that on top, and I think that was an intake for the engine. We are almost at our cruising altitude. We'll just leave it in automatic mode. changes. I think that's static. Oh, you know what? Maybe that is correct. Maybe I have flown it for 3.3 hours. Got little map lights. Three. See if that changes at all. Quick reset. Oh, look at that. They even got a, a standard airworthiness certificate. That's pretty cool. United States of America. Department of Transportation and Aviation Administration. I guess if we get pulled over, we have our registration card. plug in the iPad or take it out. That's an iPhone actually, it's not, not an iPod. Fire extinguisher. Yeah, that's for oxygen masks and the uh, parachute. I don't know if we can interact with that. Maybe we should try it. says for a topic to set. Oh, two plus hours? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I don't think we're doing that. I think we're gonna do that. two times speed and see how quick it goes. If it goes pretty quick, I'll hang. Right now we're at 2x speed. And I'll tell you what, if it keeps ticking down the way it is, then it won't be a problem because it's almost uh, yeah, about two seconds a minute. But that's not bad. to watch out for its turns because uh, this thing does not do good with turns when it's sped up. Thankfully, there's not much of a change. We're going from 57, 57 degrees to 57 and 56, so it will make a pretty good time. We'll leave it in 2x for a little bit and see, see what happens here. I would like to finish the flight. That would be kind of nice. I'm 
I can error fly videos. This is the part that we cut out all the time. Maybe when Microsoft 2024 comes out, they'll give us a, a good way of fast forwarding. Fast forwarding is part of the flight, so we can do like long haul flights and not have to sit here for hours. It's not that I, I find it boring per se, but I know if I was watching this, like I'd be clicking off right now, like because there's, no, there's nothing going on. Unless I was using it for like ASMR, where I like the, the noise of the engine. Then I can like close my eyes and just listen to the engine. But other than that, I mean, especially flying over water, open water. I never go more than two times the normal speed with Microsoft's uh, speed increase. I never do. Time I've gone faster than that, I've run into big issues. The 737 I fly, that one, I go 8x, but that's programmed from the, from the software developer, and it works phenomenally. Hey man, I made a good ass dish for dinner tonight, man. I, made, I had these uh, spinach and cheese tortellinis that I, uh, cooked up in, in the water and then I took some uh, some cut up potatoes I took some carrots some corn and some black beans with a couple tablespoons of butter and a little bit of olive oil started sauteing those salt pepper pap uh, paprika from Morocco that my mom brought back when she came back from Morocco earlier in the year. Some crushed red chili flakes, basil, some oregano, some grated uh, Parmesan uh, cheese, a little white wine. Reduced that down. Took a little bit of the, the water from the pasta after the pasta was done cooking. Put a couple ladles for water in there to make a kind of like a broth. And dumped those tortellinis in there, mixed it all up. Mm. That's some good eating for me, tell you. Kind of an accident making making it that way. I, I didn't initially plan on it, but my kids didn't want it. And I used all the sauce for uh, so I made I made spaghetti, but I was originally gonna make the tortellini. I said they didn't want it. So I made them pasta, but I used all the sauce, all the marinara sauce I used for the spaghetti today. I made the tortellini for me because I had to use it by a certain date. But it was good, man. It was almost a little too spicy, but I powered through it. Drove straight through it. Reading this article. send it to. I think I have it on my iPad here. I was reading this article the other day about Lord of the Rings and it's an interesting theory they have with Tom Bombadil being in the movies as the as the um, as the Witch King. Let me see if I have it here. I think I do. Yeah, Lord of the Rings, right here. And there's a fan, so if if you're a Lord of the Rings fan or if you're not, you know, uh, that there's a character from the books called Tom Bombadil. And Tom was, like, one of the most powerful wielders of magic in the whole story. The Hobbit books, Lord of the Rings books, doesn't matter. He was the most, like, one of the top couple of guys that was powerful, uh, magic-wise. Well, supposedly he was in the story, in the movies, the Peter Jackson movies the whole time, as the Witch King of Angmar. And 
I don't know. I kind of find that a little hard to believe that, you know, Tom's main, like, Tom, you know, was really the Witch King. Because you know, he was around long before the Witch King ever came. So that, so either he could have been, like, either he could have really killed the real Witch King and took his, his presence, or, or he was really, like, the king over in Numenor that, you know, eventually turned into the Witch King, so I don't, I don't really know what to believe, but I, I think it's an interesting theory that he was in the books. In the books, uh, he saves Frodo, Sam, Mary, and Pippin when they leave the Shire, and they're on their way to the Prince of Pony. He saves them from the Nazgul, and he takes the One Ring, and it doesn't affect him. He puts it on his finger, it doesn't affect him. Uh, he's holding it, it doesn't affect him. So, it's, that's a theory also that feeds into the theory of him being the Witch King because the ring didn't affect him. Um, but I don't, I don't know what to believe. Yeah, I mean, he, he's an interesting character, but I mean, he didn't play like a huge role in the books. Peter Jackson kind of said it, said it best. He was like, well, no. He could have been in, this, in the movies, because this was a part of the movie that you didn't see. It's kind of an interesting answer, I guess. So we've got about an, an hour left until time of descent, so we'll keep rolling. At, uh, I think, I guess we'll finish the flight. I mean, we've already cut the, the trip in half. As long as the screen stay on, I'll stay on. I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. Aliens. Big fan of aliens. I like the thing, the original thing, like with Kurt Russell. That's a really good movie. Hateful Eight. That's one of my, like one of my all-time favorite movies. That and uh, Django Unchained. Both of those movies, man. I, I could watch those movies. Like... All the time. The uh, uncut version, the 40 year old version. That's another one of my favorites. That's a great movie, the 40 year old version. Like the, I guess like the last half an hour is not that great, but like the first hour is something else. Comedy gold, in my opinion. The car's kind of fucked up right now. I'll be taking that to the shop tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to have it towed or, or drive it in, but I think my car is burning oil. Took it out last night to go to the store, and uh, the oil light came on briefly and then turned off, but I'm, I'm thinking it came on because when I started the car, you know, the oil is very cold when you first start the car, and it's cold where I'm at. Uh, and I think there wasn't enough oil circulating uh, for the system to to know that there were, you know, so I, I think that it didn't, that the system read that there was too little oil until the engine warmed up, and then once the engine warmed up and the oil expanded and all that, then there was, there was, there was more volume at that point, and I think that's why the light turned off, but I, I hope that's the case. I've had cars with problems before with burning oil, and it's not that big of a deal if you just keep an extra quart, extra two quarts in the car. You know, and just check it regularly, but my car is older too, so I'm hoping that it's not anything else, but uh, last time I had my car looked at was like, I guess about three or four months ago, and they said everything looked really good. I don't really drive a whole lot. I think I was due for an oil change in October by time, but by mileage, I'm still under the mileage that that was recommended, so I'm, I'm thinking because I waited so long to go for an oil change, I'm thinking that it did burn out a little bit, and uh, that's why that light came on. I was driving a regular amount of miles, and had my oil changed on a regular basis like I used to, but the oil probably, the oil light probably wouldn't come on. getting there, folks. We've got about 46 minutes until our descent. I, 
kind of like doing this kind of video. I'm like, this was, this was a good idea. I forget the gentleman's name who who asked me to do it. Uh, but that was that was a good idea. It was interesting. To, it's a good test of my knowledge too. Because you know, what I mean, like, you know, I guess I am knowledgeable uh, when it comes to these planes to an extent. I'm no pilot, you know, in real life. You know, I'm an insurance agent. <laughs> but uh, you know, I've played these simulators for a very long time. But that was a pretty good test of knowledge for me to be able to communicate everything, hopefully in a way that that comes across easily. Got hung up a couple of times, but you know, we uh, fought our way through it. Water is still down. I flew to, uh, I flew, I've gone to Germany a couple of times uh, many years ago, and one of the times I flew over. We, we flew over like on the red eye so we left we left the airport in America at like 10 o'clock at night you know, so we could land you know in the morning in Germany and I'm telling you when you're flying over the ocean in the middle of the night and you're at cruising altitude I'm telling you that's that's the darkest shit I've ever seen in my life like I saw nothing <laughs> zero zero point zero there was nothing to look at like i was like putting my face up to the window like looking around i can't see i can't see a damn thing like nothing no lights on the no lights below no lights above just it's crazy it's weird very strange to look out and not see anything it's got to be crazy for a pilot too right to like look out and not see anything I mean, I'm sure they see a little bit more than we do, you know, at, at night over the ocean, but that's crazy. I've had a couple of interesting experiences on airplanes. I was taken off from Atlanta one time in a thunderstorm, and that airport, like, I think like three or four planes can take off at one time, but there was three planes, us and two other planes, taken off at the same time, and we all kind of lifted off at the same time, and we're all like, in a row take off. I don't know how far our plane dropped, but while we were climbing, we hit this pocket of something during the storm, and it felt like we dropped like a thousand feet. Like, it was like a roller coaster drop, like where your stomach kind of comes up to here and then it goes back down again. Yeah, I did that, and then other weird experience I had was on my way back from Cabo San Lucas uh, many years, many years ago, 15 years ago. And we were uh, at cruising altitude, and we're flying over like the Gulf of Mexico heading towards Texas, because we, we had a layover at Dallas, and then Dallas you know, back to our home. And uh, I'm on the right side, and I'm looking out the window, and I can see this plane coming towards us. Like, now, I, was, I mean, I guess we were at different altitudes, but it looked like it was coming right at us. But it, it wound up turning a few miles away from us. But it was pretty wild, like looking out the window and being like, looking at my wife, I'm like, do you think the pilot knows there's a plane heading towards us? Like, Does he know? Yeah, the plane wound up turning, you know, a few miles before us, but yeah, that was pretty wild. All right, 30 minutes. We might as well finish the flight. Should we change our destination to Bora Bora instead? Why don't we try changing our destination? Let's put ourselves in regular time. I think I'm back in regular time. Let me see here. with Microsoft, there's no way of knowing if you're in sped up time or regular time, uh, unless you remember how many clicks you did for the backwards. So if I get confused, I always go to the clock and check the seconds. Because if we were in sped up time, this would be like six, seven, eight. It would just it would go up according to our actual speed. 
Alright, let's uh, type in... Good. So we, now we're going to Bora Bora instead of Tahiti. I know it's all part of the same islands, but Bora Bora is the one place I've never been, the one place I've always wanted to go, and it's the one place I wanted to talk. Let me check out, instead of going to Navigraph, let's pull up the chart here. See what uh, our minimums are. zooming in that way. I can do it this way. Chart options, header, for the minimums. So that's on minimums. We did 506. Oh yeah, and we have an NDD station there as well. Yeah, let's do a couple of things. I say the final course 112. 112. So let's set 112 as our go into heading mode real quick. Let's change our FMS source. Probably not going to be using this format, but okay. all right. So now this top knob has changed the course. So let's plug in 112. And now we can go back to FMS, go back to navigation. an NDB station, not... They do have one VOR station, so we can plug that in. Let's go to Navcoms. 
audio and radio. So I want to get one. Zero, three, four, transfer, and then we'll we'll make this one the other one. What's that? Three, four, three, four, five. about 30 minutes until we need to descend. And we can make our bearing one. We can make that EDF one. And we can make this F one. All right, very good. Let's speed back up again. Very good. Changed everything. Now we're going to an uh, airport that's a little closer. And uh, a place where... Oh, shit, wrong button. My bad. Yeah, Bora Bora, I've never been there, but man, oh man, that's like... That's like the one place I want to end up. Like, I would be okay, but... I think I would be okay just being like a photographer on the beach, just like, you know, taking those little, like, those like, little key photos, like, you put on a keychain. This one's like 20 years old. Still got it. Boy, oh boy, I wish I had that again. Good lord. That was a lot of fun back then. 20 years ago at that age. Oof. With what's in that picture? My goodness. had a time machine. Bottle of that first six or seven months. Bottle up and just put that thing on on automatic replay. Just put it on the loop. Like the matrix. Just, just keep reliving those six or seven months. bearing indicators we put on. The ADF is not picking up because that's way too far for an NDB station, but the VOR station for HHN, that is being picked up. harder for myself, but before I had an ILS landing. <laughs> I don't have that luxury anymore. Now we're going to land the plane our own already, but this plane should do an RNAV landing pretty well. The only 
plane I've ever flown to Bora Bora was an ATR. Oh shit, you gotta slow down. not handle handle turning at high speeds very well. Not at all. It's like the opposite of okay. I will say this, if the screens do go out at any point from here on out, we're not redoing, we're not redoing the flight. So I will, I will be ending the stream if uh, our, our screens do go out again. Hopefully they'll be okay. I can, I've learned a way to kind of get around it a little bit, like if I save the flight, and then reload it. Uh, usually everything is okay at that point. I do have to enter the whole flight plan again and all that, but I lose this whole menu system up here. And that I don't really, you know, if we need to refuel for some reason, I can't get to it. You know, if I need to pause the flight for some reason, I can't do it. Like, in 18.8 at first now. Hopefully some of y'all are still with me. Let me show you something here. Actually, I'm just going to plug in 4,000. When you're looking at the flight plan, and you see an altitude in blue, that means it's part of the flight plan, like it's part of one of the charts. Like it's 
something that needs to be done. If it's in white, that's just a regular altitude as we're descending, but if it's in blue, it's part of the flight plan. So when we're descending, like we're gonna go on VNAT right now. Okay. So now that we're in VNAT mode, half and it also has a V here. When we start descending, we should see a magenta colored, same color as you know these digits. We should see it's a 4,000. This number down here was reading any other number. That any other number would be a magenta over here as well. So as long as we're in VNAV, regardless of what altitude we put here, that plane is still gonna, well, regardless, it, it has to be, like if we put a lower altitude in, the plane's gonna level off at whatever altitude is here. So today it's 4,000. If we were gonna program, say, 2,000 in here, the plane would still level off at 4,000. If we got to that altitude and there was no other altitude associated with the flight plan. If we get there and then our next altitude is 2,000, that magenta number would change automatically. Since we're in automatic throttle mode, with the FMS button still clicked, we shouldn't really have to do much in the way of anything with throttle until uh, we're lining up with our approach. Speed up again. Click on timer and I click start. See how it's moving much faster. If you do the speed up feature and you kind of lose track of how many times you sped up, just find the clock in the airplane and you know match the seconds of that clock with seconds in real time. fuel selector on automatic. That's all the way back here. Four minutes till we start our descent. this ocean after all. slow down. Right, let's go ahead and slow down. Bring up that clock again just to make sure. like the 
ADF is reading now. If you look on our map, it has a top and descent marker. If we had VMAV off, I'm pretty sure that would be off as well. crack that's kind of silly <laughs> here's our vertical deviator so once that gets lined up there we go D path the engines decrease automatically here's that 4,000 I was telling you about with the line under it which means over 4,000 Airplane's going to show up on the arrival chart when we have the screen split in half. Let's see. Probably won't. But if it did, that would be really awesome. Actually, um, I think what we're gonna do is is split the screen, map there like that, and make this whole screen here our chart. have uh, our airplane on there. I want to look at the approach chart anyways. Okay, so... miles from the airport we need to be at 2,000 feet and then when we get to five miles out we start declining down and the airport is 14 feet okay over okay so 5.1 miles out at 2,000 feet we start really descending All right, well that works for me
is Bora Bora. Delicious, delicious Bora Bora. I'm not sure why I'm so fascinated with that island. I mean, I've never been there before. I don't even think I've known anybody that's been there before. For some reason, my mind is telling me that's where I need to retire to. Doubt it like that. But it's nice to think. It's nice to wish. See, I think I think this is our airport right here. I think we come out and we go around and come in. But I'm pretty sure this is Bora Bora. It's either that or this one is. Oh, you know what? This is Bora Bora here. The airport's still where I was showing you. It's just it's over here. So I think we go out to this island here and we make this loop and come in. temperature is okay, no reason for icing equipment yet. Right on target with our vertical navigation. I like that it has this vertical deviation here has it here for, you know, how many feet too high or too low we are. That's pretty cool. we can operate the door right now. No, I think you can actually because the cursor went away. Yeah, well, we're not going to try it. We're almost on the ground legitimately. automatic throttle on this. I mean, it takes a lot of the guesswork out with, you know, where to put the throttle for descent, where to put it for climbing speed. I mean, this plane's got a really good set of automated features, which is nice. To me, it makes the simulator a lot more enjoyable. I like spending as much time on the outside of the airplane as I can when I'm flying over when I'm flying over terrain and over ground. I just noticed there's a checklist button here. I've never noticed that before. That is interesting. Let me, uh...
I'll be damned. You can check it off. Stand corrected. You can interact with this wheel and you can check things off. You can scroll up and down and you can check things off. I stand corrected. I'll have to put that in the, uh, the description tomorrow when I'm able to edit this video. I stand corrected. I apologize. Did not know. Yeah, when you do a live stream, it seems like with YouTube, you can't edit the video until like the next day. Or many hours later, at least. You know, I, I just real no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who calls the airplane? <laughs> you son of a bitch. You mother son of a bitch. the wrong runway, that's why it's so messed up. put ourselves in heading mode. Put ourselves out of pause. Okay, nav's not working now. Great. Does VS work? Yeah, we might be cooked, guys because the VS isn't working either. It says it's working. But yeah, I guess we'll try to land it anyways. I can't believe the screens just went out. And now we can't operate anything. I mean, we have the flight plan. But, uh, like, none of this other stuff is working. heading is going to work either so so I guess to turn the plane we're going to have to do it manually wow All right, we'll try to land it manually then I guess we'll just continue like this until we get down to a good altitude and then we'll turn around and land at the airport that 
know what to do. And I was hoping the screens would last the whole time. It really was. We are so close. So close. It's weird though, that when they kick back on, you lose control of like everything. I don't think uh Yeah, that doesn't work either. There's like hot buttons you can do with the controller to like holding a bumper down and pushing the button that'll turn on autopilot, or heading hold, or, you know, VS or altitude hold, but yeah, none of that, none of that's working. Very strange. Oh, hello, gorgeous. The water is so pretty. Gonna follow the flight plan, by the way. You know, the flight plan, uh, I'm gonna try to at least. Uh, we still got 112 done there. I wonder if I can still program in the MDB. That's still programmed and program there as well. Okay. Well, let me turn off this then. game. I think they're finally killed. It's not in the water there. Oh, that's Bora Bora there. I thought Bora Bora was over here. All right, well, I'm still going to try to land the plane. With or without screens. Had the info on the bottom of the uh, bottom of the screen here, so I have a good idea of the airspeed, the altitude, my descent angle, trim. So no, I don't know. Actually, we still have. But I don't know if that's going to line up with the. Uh, it's not going to line up with the VOR station the right way because the VOR station is not at the airport. 
VOR stations all the way back, like, you know, 20 miles or so. That's some bullshit. We do all this work, all this work. That's the thing with this airplane, and that's why, I mean, I lit up Flight FX, the maker of this plane. I lit them up in Discord a couple of times right after I bought the plane. I, I mean, I found it kind of disgusting to charge as much money as they did for this plane and not tell people the truth about the airplane. You have to buy the airplane, and then once you buy it, you get access to the website where the website tells you, oh, by the way, uh, there's a good chance your screens aren't going to work. And if you want them to work, you can only fly in places that have, like, no population. You can't have traffic on. You can't have live weather on. You can't have photogrammetry. You can't do multiplayer. You can't do live weather. You can't do live time. You have to turn all the details off on the map, and you can't make the map more than five miles. I mean, for real. The document was like two and a half pages long. That is crazy. down a lot. Okay, there's our island there. And put our landing lights on. I don't have access to throttle either. I don't have access to the throttle. Access to the throttle. Jesus Christ, airplane. use my mouse. Can't use, uh, I guess I gotta hang out back here. And even then, the throttle doesn't move. It just goes all the way forward from what it sounded like. <laughs> this is crazy, man. still works. This is 
not the way I wanted to end the stream, that's for sure. I get as much, a lot of speed as I can, because when I start getting closer to the runway, when I pull up, I'm going to lose a lot of speed. fast either because we got the landing gear down and I got one set of flaps down so the trim still works that's good I know I can use the throttle but I don't want to go from zero to full throttle you know while I'm trying to land but I might not have a choice Full. I was trying to do the first time. I got hung up with the uh, with the throttle. Hey man, we landed though. That's some shit. I'll take it. What a fucked up trip. God damn. That is not the way I wanted to end tonight's flight. <clears throat> but we landed. Wasn't a great landing, but we on the ground. Only took us three hours to do it. That ain't too bad, I guess. <laughs> she, well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. The last 10 minutes or so could have been more fun. But we landed. It was interesting. We got there without really anything working for the last uh, 10,000 feet. It seems to be these, these screens like to cut out around 11,000 feet during descent. It's happened to me a lot around 11,000 feet. Don't know what it is all over the world at different airplanes uh so but anyways uh please subscribe please like please follow please comment please share just put the thumbs up and uh i will be back tomorrow over the beautiful skies of mother earth flying an airplane don't know which one i am working on another aeroply video currently uh that should be up in a day or so and uh that's about it my friends i will see y'all